Hi, my name is Dr. Daniel Fox. I'm a licensed psychologist in the state of Texas and an expert in the area of personality disorders. And today I wanted to talk to you about the three part narcissistic relationship cycle. And it's called the glorifying, belittling and abandoning cycle. And uh, this activity and these strategies come from my recently released uh, workbook for mental health providers called the Narcissistic Personality Disorder Toolbox. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about it and kind of explain the technique so people are aware, so people that are maybe in this type of relationship may be aware of this cycle and the different processes and steps and also how to manage it and deal with it if you're in it. Uh, I have attached uh, a worksheet the link will be in the comments of the video that will go through all of the different steps and issues that we talk about today. So I hope that um, that you'll you'll enjoy the the worksheet and why don't we get started and talk about the components of being in this relationship that has these three parts of the narcissistic relationship cycle. Now, it's best to work with these strategies uh, with someone that that you trust, someone positive, like a mental health provider. Okay. Um, so let's get started and we'll talk a little bit uh, about it and the strategies. So what this is, is three part cycle. So first part is the glorifying part. And this is the beginning of, of those relationships and everything is really great. It's often called the honeymoon phase. And this is glorifying. Everything is great and you're excited to be in this relationship. And, and this person, you're typically not aware that this individual is along the narcissistic spectrum yet because you're, you're having a lot of fun. You're going out and there's a lot of attention paid to you and um, there's a lot of interaction, there's great trips, uh, there's great sex, there's great fantasy. All of these things are falling into place and you start thinking, this, this is just wonderful, this is this wonderful experience and that is the honeymoon phase and we call that the glorifying phase where you glorify one another and you think how wonderful this individual is. And as time goes on, what happened is then you go into what's called the belittling stage and the belittling stage is here the individual starts to demean you in small ways making make perhaps making comments about uh, your hair your shoes your earrings if you have them your clothes um, how often you go to the gym little little comments and you start to remember the glorifying so you, you accept the belittling Sometimes the belittling will fit what you believe about yourself. Um, a lot of individuals along narcissistic spectrum, as well as those who meet criteria for narcissistic personality disorder, are very good at reading others. And they're very good at reading what, what they need, what they need to hear, uh, things of that nature. And they, they do that, of course, during the glorifying stage. Then in the belittling stage, the curtain comes back a little bit and that belittling begins. And then it starts to build and it continues until those comments are, are larger. They start talking about your worth, your family, um, and they become more continuous and more prominent and more hurtful. And as they go on for a period of time, uh, you may start to question the relationship. You may be like, I don't deserve to be in this type of relationship. And you may think of leaving. So what happens is the individual along the narcissistic spectrum or narcissistic personality disordered individual reads this. Remember, they're really good at reading others. So they read this in you and they turn the tables. They're really good at sort of turning the tables and you end up in the abandoning phase where they may actually say something like, well, you know, this isn't working out for me. I mean, no one else is going to love you and care about you and they're not going to be as special and unique as I am. They may not say that exact thing, but that's basically uh, what they communicate. And, you know, so I'm, I'm going to leave you unless you do this or I've had it with this or sometimes during the abandoning phase, right before it seems like they're about to walk out the door, you get those glimpses of the glorifying phase those memories of the great trips and the great attention and the great um, the romance possibly the passion possibly whatever whatever that may have been and that from abandoning instead of leaving and exiting the relationship you go back into the glorifying but the glorifying here once that cycle is in place you don't go back to the same level of glorifying so that same level of glorifying may not be as great but there are little smatterings there of the honeymoon phase of that glorifying phase. So you stay in, you stay involved in the relationship. 
And this cycle continues, glorifying, belittling, abandoning, glorifying, belittling, abandoning. And it continues in this cycle. Now, the cycle can take days, weeks, but it can also take hours or minutes to cycle through. So you have to be aware of when these things are happening. So a lot of my clients that are partners of individuals along the narcissistic spectrum or that have narcissistic personality disorder will talk about this cycle. And if it's present, then we also have to examine the willingness to leave the relationship, the willingness to honestly uh, assess the relationship. Okay? And so in doing that, this is where these strategies come into play. And I believe that it is a lot about building awareness and because my clients are adults, I like to empower them with choice, that they have a choice to remain in the relationship. Um, but I, I think that they need to make that choice. Me, as their psychologist, I, I can't make that choice for them. So I help them to work towards discovering what is, what is best for them. So let's kind of walk through some of those steps in the strategies about what I do with, with my clients to help them kind of explore what that is, um, the costs and benefits of staying and leaving and things of that nature. But specifically, we're going to talk about the glorifying, belittling, and abandoning cycle. So first what we like to do is I like to identify those instances of glorifying. And I ask my clients to define them as best they can, okay, and as clearly as they can. Okay, so they write out those instances. And there's a lot of, of power of pen to paper, of writing. I know some people don't like handwriting, so now you can type it. Um, now with, with dictation on different phones, if you don't like to write it or type it, you can dictate it. But the important thing is, is that you are getting down those instances of glorifying. What were they? Okay? And you want to identify them as clearly and concretely as you can, with as much concrete evidence as you can. Once we identify that glorifying, then I want to ask them to identify the belittling stage and doing the same thing. They can write it, they can type it, they can dictate it in as much detail as they possibly can. And it has to be concrete. So it has to be concrete explanations. We call this operationally defining it, right? Getting down to the operational components. What is it or what are those instances that make up belittling. So how do you describe it? He or she says this, he or she does this, he or she says this. Um, so you want to go down and break that down. That's belittling. Then we're going to break down the abandoning components in the relationship as well, doing the same thing. It's that you write it out, it is that you can dictate it, okay? And again, we're going to operationally define that. We're going to be as concrete and clear as we can as we write out those components of abandoning. Because it's building that sense of awareness. Because sometimes we're in these relationships and they become so tumultuous that we don't realize that we're in this cycle of glorifying, belittling, and abandoning. And it keeps going around and it's like we're spinning around. And it's hard to get direction when we're spinning around because we're dizzy. Okay? So once we identify those factors of glorifying, belittling, and abandoning, the next thing that I ask my clients to do is is I ask them that to start to overcome that glorifying stage, right? Because we're going to start there, right? So they have to examine those qualities and experiences. And I ask them to ask themselves some questions. For example, right? Is my partner giving me something I'm missing? Because a lot of times, you know, people stay in relationships because it's fulfilling them. They're getting some type of fulfillment, even the unhealthy ones. We have to recognize that we're in those relationships for a reason. And what are those reasons? And sometimes it's because we feel like it's that missing piece, like something's missing. Another uh, critical question I'll ask, um, is this missing piece is something that you can give yourself? Okay. Do you feel that you need that other person to provide that missing piece, so to speak? The next component that I'll ask them to consider is, now can you empower yourself to meet the, your own needs and expectations? Are you able to do it on your own? Do you have a sense of efficacy, self-empowerment, um, to, to get the things that you need and meet your own expectations? Also, can we look at the relationship objectively and clearly? Do you feel that you honestly can see your relationship? Can you see these different components when they're in play and how powerful they are and how they, they keep you hooked into the relationship at times? And so 
can you see that the glorifying partner that to overcome to overcome that that sometimes you have to come to terms with your own sense of shame doubt and the wounds that you may carry with you because remember all relationships we're all in our relationship because we get a sense of fulfillment now that fulfillment isn't always negative there's sometimes positive components as well but when we're in unhealthy relationships a lot of times those tend to be because they fill negative parts of us okay um, then I like to, we like to explore more for my clients that are ready to go in a little deeper and you'll see this in in the worksheet if if you download it and, and check it out um, that it asks right that can you give yourself what you need okay. can you empower yourself and how would you do that how would you empower yourself and can you overcome the shame doubt and wounds that you currently have and can you do it on your own and how would you do that because we're going to go back to operationally defining clearly describing what are those components right that i just mentioned now once we have that idea and that sense of the glorifying stage then we're going to examine the belittling stage and in the belittling stage there are some critical questions that i ask as well and those questions are do i deserve to be spoken to with respect at all times ask yourself that do you deserve to be spoken to with respect at all times? And that's a yes or no, okay? And would, would you be okay with someone belittling your friend the way your partner belittles you? Okay. So now what we're, we're looking, we're trying to remove ourselves from that situation, taking a look at that belittling and saying that, well, I wouldn't want my friend to go through that, then why is it okay for you? So it's answering that question as well, exploring it. Remember, we're building this insight and awareness into these different stages. Okay? And can, can you challenge the red flags that, that you see? Can you challenge them? Do you feel like that you have the will and the power to challenge those red flags? Um, and questioning yourself, so do you, do you deserve, do you feel like you deserve the attention and respect that makes you feel good about yourself? And that can be a hard question because sometimes people are dealing with self-esteem issues, self-concept issues, how they see the world, where they are in the world, their purpose, so on and so forth. So that becomes a really, um, even though it seems like a simple yes or no question, that yes or no um, implies a lot and carries a lot with it. It really does. Uh, and then, so then the, the question becomes from there, what we want to do is... Um, we want to talk about how would you deal with it when someone speaks to you in a belittling manner, when someone disrespects you? How do you deal with that? What are ways that you can deal with that? And I ask my clients to really explore that. Let's explore how you can assert yourself, how you can apply yourself to, to develop your boundaries and what you're comfortable with so that you're treated that way, that gives you the sense of empowerment, that gives you a sense of what you deserve and the respect and power that you do deserve. Now from there, I'll ask my clients, so about challenging the red flags, are you willing to challenge those red flags? Are you willing to do that? And right now we're just processing that, right? Because we know that there sometimes can be relationship violence and relationship issues and stuff like that. But we have to conceptualize what, what this is, what challenging those red flags are, what those, what those issues are. When you see signs of belittling, are you comfortable enough challenging that and how would you challenge that? Building again that sense of awareness, clarifying some of that behavior to follow through to lessen belittling and give you a greater sense of control. And then from there, so what are you going to do the next time that you feel belittled? How are you going to deal with that? How are you going to manage that? Because we already know that you're in the cycle. And if you're in the cycle, we have to talk about how you're going to manage when you're in it so you're not spinning around and feeling this sense of loss and confusion instead we want to plan out how you're going to behave in that belittling stage to empower yourself and give your give you a sense of, of greater choices once we've explored the belittling stage then we examine the abandoning stage and here there are some questions as well yes or no questions such as um, will you be okay if the relationship ends and we sort of process that and explore that. Um, do you believe that once you're alone, you'll always be alone? And it's important to remember that if you've had one relationship, there's a significant probability that you'll have another. Okay. And then um, 
Also, when you look at the responsibility and the breakdown in the relationship, do you need to take 100% of the responsibility in the relationship? And you have to examine that because healthy relationships right, are this, but we know that there is also fluctuation in relationships as well. So it's not always going to be 50-50, sometimes 80-20, 60-40, wherever that is. But it's never that sense of responsibility where it's zero and 100. Okay? And that, that leads to those lopsided, unhealthy relationships that, that we want to avoid, that we don't want to get caught in. Um, can you see a future without this person in your life? What does that look like? Can you describe it? Can you examine that? Okay. Um, can you accept yourself and be self-reliant? Can you believe in your ability to do what you need to do to achieve the goals that you want to achieve in your life? And then we go in a little deeper about how would you deal with the relationship when it ends? How would you manage that? And your responsibility in the relationship includes, and we like to talk about what are your responsibilities in the relationship. Really examine that, really go deep, kind of understanding what your responsibilities are as well as the responsibilities of the other person. Because we know that we want to get it as equal as we can. And in these cyclical, you know, negative um, relationships that a lot of times they are lopsided and we want to try to even that as best we can. And what would make you be more self-reliant and accepting of yourself? What would you have to do to do that? And a lot of folks that, that, I, that, that I talk to when we talk about these issues of dealing with and exploring, glorifying, belittling, and abandoning, these are the first time they have ever explored these issues in their life. And it, it, it can be difficult and it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. Um, I've attached the, the worksheet the link will be in the comments of, of this video and I hope you'll, you'll check it out and I hope that, that you enjoy it. I think it's best to do it with a mental health provider uh, who can help guide you and kind of steer and help you explore these issues for yourself to make sure you're getting the best outcome that, that you possibly can. And relationships are important to all of us and managing those relationships and getting a sense of fulfillment is important for all of us too. And I hope that you found this really helpful. Uh, I've enjoyed um, talking about it and I hope that, that you enjoy the worksheet. And please leave any comments that you think other people may benefit from uh, in regards to the cycle or using the worksheet or anything else. And thank you very much for your time. And I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.